Today, the Niners are meeting with free agent safety Julian Blackman, who is a, a good starter. Played for the Colts the first four years of his career. I mean, whether or not the Niners get him, I think it kind of is a window into what they're looking for right now. A starter, a safety. Yeah, for me, it, it's, uh, it doesn't bode well for Talanoa Hufunga or the earlier reports that we heard in the offseason, um, which was that Talon, uh, that Huff was going to uh, – his his job wasn't promised to him. He was going to be fighting for his job coming into camp off of an injury. So, uh, you know, a, a little bit of this can you, – you can look at it two ways. You know, w- one way you could definitely be negative and feel as though that, hey, the gauntlet is out. They're not happy with Huff. Obviously, it has to be Huff. He's coming off the injury, and they wouldn't dare get a, get rid of Jair. They just got him, and he's got the, the latest tape. But <clears> – <throat> You can look at it that way, but then you can also look at it from a standpoint of that he really is uh, – Blackman is going to be the actual free safety. Like he really is a one-high single safety where he can play a skill set that's outside of both Jair Brown and Tyler Noah Hufunga. So um, right now he's a get. I mean outside of Huff, you know, taking like the, the sentimental side out of it, we do need this guy. We do need to sign him. Um, we have a huge glaring hole at free safety, in my opinion, on the defensive side of the ball. And if we don't, then we're relegated to the draft to be able to fix that. And whoever they get in the draft is, is going to have to play. So this is the youngest, most game viable guy that's walking through the, that's walking through our building right now. Um, like you said, he's a prior pick in 2020 by the Colts. Started for them right away. Um, he's a guy we need. It's it's more than a it's more than a want. It's a need. And I think, I mean, whether or not they end up with Julian Blackman, they've looked into Rayshon Jenkins. They're clearly trying to do something different at safety, which is interesting because new new defensive coordinator. And so far, Brandon Staley seems like he's put his imprint on the defense a little bit. Leonard Floyd is his guy. He, like, developed Leonard Floyd. He tried to get Eric Kendricks. Um, I wonder, though, is this Nick Sorensen's vision? Like, he's a DB coach. He's been a DB coach for a long time. Maybe his stamp on this defense is a different look at safety. Maybe he wants someone at free safety who covers a little more ground. Uh, Maybe he wants the ability to play a little bit more single high, which is interesting. I mean, that's his whole background coming with Seattle. Uh, So this could be a change for the 49ers defense. I mean, Hafunga was D'Amico's guy. And D'Amico's like two defensive coordinators uh, in the past. So now all of a sudden, he doesn't necessarily have an advocate in the building. And maybe Nick Sorensen, has his own opinion about Hafunga or what the defense needs. Maybe he just wants to get the make the defense faster. Well, okay, that that's one way to look at it. But also, um, make a, you also can look like making the defense younger. Uh, we just that, we just haven't had a really good free safety back there that can actually tip the game and make a difference. I mean, Gip was good for us when we first got him. But mm-hmm. he started showing his age as the season went along. Um, and that's one of the things that I feel like the, the 49ers have seen where it's not always on the linebackers or it's, always, it's not always on our front seven to get home and to be able to control the line of scrimmage. Sometimes we do have to have guys back there who know how to be a threat. Uh, so, you know, I look at it from the standpoint that it is a glass half full situation because I don't necessarily think we were really good at free safety last year. We can only go up from there. So, it's a get. We need it. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at his stats. He had four picks last year. Um, mm-hmm. He's 25. Years, tackles. Yeah, 88 tackles. He uh, is 25 years old. Seems like the kind of guy. I'm just trying to figure out how much he's going to cost. Yeah. So that's a whole different ball game, And that's that's primarily why we're in this position now. It's because we really don't have a lot of cash to spend. As a matter of fact, I don't know. Me and uh, me and a couple of guys have been checking uh, as of late, but I've been looking on Sports Track and I've been looking at Sports Track and Over the Cap. Have you seen Leonard Floyd on our books yet? I have not seen him on our books. Mm. So we so all. we don't know like what the specifics are. Actually, what he's gonna take up? Yeah, we we have no idea. And then if you mm. look at you look at situations like. Uh, Malik, uh, Malik Collins is on, is, has been roughly, his money has been put back onto our draft cap, uh, onto our, uh, cap space. 
um, the new uh, the new one point four million dollars. I mean, the new four point eight million dollars that Jawan Jennings just accrued. That's on our on our cap. So right, uh, Yatur Gross Matos, he's on our cap. So right now, it seems as though that the Niners are kind of trying to figure out what they're going to do with eventually paying Leonard Floyd and basically kind of getting a safety that they feel is an is an uptick, but affordable bang for the buck because that's what's happening right now um it, obviously that we're cash strapped i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily think that julian blackman would be that affordable although the fact that he's available this late in free agency would sort of indicate that he might be i mean he's young he's productive mm -hmm. what was his pff grade last year let me look it up real quick i think why is what's the problem 68.3 mm -hmm. so he's solid he's good I don't know. Maybe the Niners can get him for a two or three year deal and backload it so they could afford him this year. But how many contracts are they going to backload? I don't. Well, that's dude. That from your lips to God's ears, Grant. Because right now, the restructure count right now, as we see it, is four. If I'm wrong, but we restructured Fred Warner, Kyle Uzcheck, Javon Hargraves, and George Kittle. So mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I don't. You would think that the primary restructure candidates would be younger guys. We've already kind of gone through the restructure versus extended and the, ad the advantages of restructuring a younger player versus restructuring an older player. So yeah. in my opinion, the four that they have ain't enough. There ain't no there ain't enough juice for the squeeze, man. I don't think there's yeah. a lot of I don't think there's a lot of guys left on our roster that either one are viable for a restructure or two said yes right we don't yeah. know you don't know if javarius ward told parag no i'm not doing it and i'm not leveraged so you can't get rid of me i'm not restructuring right i want wow. my money and then i want to get right into free agency so I, I wonder what they're really offering these free agent free safeties though like ray sean jenkins came for a visit didn't sign julian blackman coming for his visit doesn't mean he'll sign it's possible the niners are offering something kind of low with incentives and saying look you might be able to do better elsewhere, but you also might be able to win a Super Bowl here. Do you want to take a little less money to compete? And uh, I don't know how if that resonates with every player. I mean, I think most players want to win. I mean, excuse me, want to get paid. Want to get paid. Yeah. It's hard to sell culture when you ain't got no money behind it. It is what yeah. it is. And then on yeah. top of it, it's hard to sell culture with no money in California. That matters, man. It's... It, the cost of living out there is next level, you know, and you get guys that are coming from Indianapolis, got places where, you know, the low median income, they're, they're hands down the richest. They're probably some of the richest independent contractors in the state bar none. Uh, and you would think that when these guys are coming over here to California, they're looking at the tax bracket, they're looking at the cost of living, they're looking at real estate, schools, what it would take to ingratiate themselves, let alone their family to be over here. Coach Wilkes didn't even stay over here full time. He just got an apartment in, in state. Didn't even bring his right. family. That's how um, that's how most of the players do it. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to get somebody to bite the bullet and say, I'm taking everything and I'm coming over to San Francisco. So if things are a little muddy or murky, especially with money, and then you get somebody who's actually savvy enough to do the landscape of the infrastructure where, where the franchise lies, it's hard to get guys in the building on top yeah. of, you know, I don't want to jump ahead, but yeah, we have a new well, staff. Final point. I mean, it'd be a lot, carry more weight, what they're trying to do if they had won the Super Bowl. You might get players signing on your team for cheap, but you lost and you That's blew the lead again. And I think a lot of people are looking at this team like, I don't know. I don't know about you guys. Official BNA Music 88 says, I don't trust the math on this team being able to backload <laughs> contracts, <laughs> quest for clerical error. It's true. All these restructures, like make sure you get the details right.